वेलकम बैक टू माय यूट्यूब चैनल माय नेम इज मोहम्मद उबैद एंड दिस इज अनदर वीडियो ऑफ बेसिक्स ऑफ स्ट्रक्चरल एनालिसिस सीरीज इन दिस वीडियो वी आर गोइंग टू स्टार्ट ए न्यू टॉपिक व्हिच इज कंजुगेट बीम मेथड फॉर फाइंडिंग स्लोप एंड डिफ्लेक्शन इन दिस वीडियो वी विल लर्न व्हाट इज द बेसिक आईडिया बिहाइंड दिस मेथड वी विल आल्सो लर्न हाउ टू कन्वर्ट ए गिवन बीम इनटू इट्स कंजुगेट बीम इन द लास्ट ऑफ दिस वीडियो वी विल लर्न व्हाट आर द डिफरेंट साइन कन्वेंशन व्हिच वी विल बी यूजिंग फॉर सॉल्विंग न्यूमेरिकल प्रॉब्लम्स बाय यूजिंग दिस मेथड If you are new to our channel please subscribe to our channel if you like this video please share this video and if you have any confusion regarding any point in this video please comment down in the comment box and i will try to answer all your comment as soon as possible so let's get started with the video without any further delay so first of all let us discuss what is the idea behind this method okay so in strength of material we have learned that there are certain relationships between the loading shear force and bending moment and deflection slope okay so let me write those relationships here so uh, let me write first so it is dv upon dx is equal to w and the other is dm by dx is equal to v okay and d2m by dx square is equal to w okay so these three are some relationships and there are some other so d theta upon dx is equal to m by ei okay and dy by dx is equal to theta d2y over dx square is equal to m by ei okay so if you observe these uh, relationships let us first observe this first one okay dv by dx is equal to w and this d theta over dx is equal to m by ei so we can see here that there is some similarity between these two equations okay what is that similarity now uh, you can see here that at uh, the place of this w we have m by ei okay in this equation and at the place of this v which is our shear force okay we have theta in this equation okay so this is one thing now let us look at the second equation so in the second equation we have dm by dx is equal to v which says that the rate of change of bending moment is equal to shear force okay now if you look at this equation so this shear, this says that dy by dx is equal to theta now if we see that uh, in this equation if Uh, we have v in this equation and we have theta in this equation so and at the place of m uh, in this equation we have y so you can see here that there is some similarity between these equations okay now let us look at a simple beam so if we have a beam like this and let us assume that this is a cantilever so this is our w okay so if we apply this loading w on this beam then we will have shear force we will have bending moment okay and all other things now uh, what we are trying to do we are trying to use these relationships for finding out slope okay and deflection how we are going to do okay now if we apply this w we get shear force okay so this is our what is this this is our loading and this is our result okay what is this this is our shear force okay let me write it here shear force okay now if we look at this equation as we have seen here so if we assume that this m by ei is our loading okay so what is this so this theta which is slope it will be our result okay result from the analysis so if we use this m by ei as the loading then we will get our slope okay i hope you are understanding so what we will be doing we will apply this m by ei as a loading okay on the beam and we will use mathematics or you can say we will analyze the beam and then we will get this slope okay so this is the basic idea behind this method now we will see how we will apply this m by ei loading so this m by ei is nothing okay 
So M by M is bending moment and E I is the flexural rigidity of the given beam. Okay. So this is the how this method works. Okay. So we we change the beam into conjugate beam. Okay. And these three relationships are for real beam or you can say you can write it as a real beam. Okay. And these three relationships will be applicable for the conjugate beam. Okay. The conjugate of this real beam. Okay. So this is how this method works. Now we are changing the load. Okay. We are changing the load from W to M by EI loading. Okay. So you can get this M by EI very easily. So this is a cantilever. So if I draw the bending moment diagram of this cantilever, so it will look like this. Okay. It will be a parabola. So if the length is L, uh, so it this ordinate will be W L square by two. Okay. It will be negative. So this will be our M diagram. Okay. Bending one diagram. Now, if I divide this whole diagram by EI, okay. So this whole diagram by EI. So it will be our M by EI diagram. Okay. So it is very simple. We have uh, seen how to draw all these diagram in our previous uh, video uh, videos where we have discussed the moment area method. Okay. If you want to understand this very clearly, you can watch those videos. Okay. Now, uh, uh, what is important here? Uh, we have seen how to convert uh, uh, how to use this method okay so we use m by ei diagram as loading and then we find our uh, slope and deflection okay we will see how we will be finding out the those slope and deflection but now one important thing which is the, here to understand is that we are changing the loading okay we are changing the loading here we will we were using w and we were getting shear force so here we are uh, we are using m by ei diagram and we will be getting our slope so we are converting the loading but we also have to change the support condition okay support condition because this uh, in in the real beam this loading will create uh, at some point deflection at some point uh, uh, slope okay so in the conjugate beam we have to be consistent with those boundary condition okay because boundary condition should remain same in conjugate beam and in the real beam so how we will be doing that thing so we will discuss here before starting to understand how to convert the real beam into its conjugate beam one thing which i want to discuss here uh, is that let me write it here real beam or you can say the original beam and the conjugate beam okay so based on the above discussion which we have done here so based on these equations uh, we can see uh, we can note some points okay so the first thing is that in real beam okay in real beam this uh, the slope and in conjugate beam it will be our shear force okay and in real beam the deflection of real beam and in conjugate beam it will be the bending moment okay uh, this is shear force and this is bending moment okay what does it mean it means that in conjugate beam if we found find out this in the shear force at a section so this shear force will be our slope in the original beam okay and in the conjugate beam if i want to find out uh, or you can say if i find out the uh, sorry bending moment at a particular section it will be our it will be our deflection in the real beam okay it means that uh, if in a problem it is given that we uh, you are go you, are, you have to find out the slope and deflection at a point a okay then what you will do you will convert the con uh, the real beam into conjugate beam and in the conjugate beam you will find out the shear force and bending moment at that point a okay so the shear force will be equal to slope in real beam and the bending moment in conjugate beam will be equal to deflection in the real beam okay so this is how we are going to solve the numerical problems by using this conjugate beam method now let us discuss how to convert the support condition okay so let me write it here 
कन्वर्जन ऑफ सपोर्ट ओके सो वी हैव टू कन्वर्ट द सपोर्ट सपोर्ट ऑफ रियल बीम इन टू इट्स कॉन्जुगेट टाइप सपोर्ट ओके सो लेट मी राइट इट हियर सो फॉर रियल बीम ओके एंड और यू कैन राइट इट हियर रियल सपोर्ट ओके विच वॉज देयर इन द ओरिजिनल बीम ओके एंड लेट मी राइट इट हियर एज conjugate supports okay we will discuss one by one now first of all let us discuss a support this is our let me draw it here like this so uh, this is our fixed support okay so this uh, sign is a uh, is a continuity sign okay let me draw it like this okay so this is a continuity sign which means that this beam uh, is uh, is going like this okay in the in this direction in the horizontal direction okay we don't need to consider we are only interested in this portion okay so this is a fixed support okay we are interested in this support so this is a fixed support so at a fixed support what we have we have slope is zero okay and we have deflection zero okay now we want to change this support into a conjugate support so what are the relationship let me write it here uh, let me write it as uh, theta is interchangeable with shear force and deflection or you can say uh, sorry let me write it here y so there should be no confusion so y is interchangeable with m okay so it means that in real beam it is uh, we have slope and in conjugate beam we have shear force okay and in real beam we want to find out deflection then we have to find out the moment okay so if we want to convert this support this fixed support into its conjugate support it means that we should have a condition in which the shear force should be zero and the bending moment should be zero in the conjugate beam okay so the only the only end condition which satisfy both these thing is our free end okay is free end because in at free end we have shear force zero and we have bending moment zero okay so this is the first condition okay i hope you have understood this thing and let me let me state clearly so in fixed beam okay in 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 real case we have slope zero and deflection zero now if we want to convert this fixed support into its conjugate support which means that if we look uh, at these two things okay in real case we have slope and in conjugate beam we have shear force okay so it means that in real case theta is zero so in the conjugate case shear force should be zero okay so that's why it is v is zero and in uh, real case slope is zero that it means that the bending moment in conjugate beam should be zero so the only condition we satisfy this is free end which i have drawn here so this is the free end we will convert this fixed support into a free end okay now let us discuss the second support condition okay which is if we have a let us say we have a pin support okay pin support we have a pin support now we know that at pin support we have slope okay so slope is not equal to zero and deflection will be zero okay in principle deflection will be zero because there cannot be any uh, any deflection in vertical direction and in horizontal direction so but there will be slope okay now we want to convert this support into its conjugate case so as i have written here in real we have theta in conjugate we have shear so uh, if i want to convert this into a into its conjugate support so we should change this support into a support which will have shear force uh, which will have shear force but it will not have moment so the only thing which uh, the only type of support which have these two requirements is this pin support okay so at pin support we will have shear force so shear force is not equal to zero but moment will be zero okay so the spin support satisfy all these two requirements now let us discuss the 
third one so in third one let us say we have a we have a roller support okay so in roller support the slope is not equal to zero the deflection is also not zero so if we want to convert this roller support into its conjugate beam we can use this roller support as it is why because theta is not equal to zero it means the in conjugate beam uh, sorry in conjugate case shear should not be zero why zero it means in conjugate case the moment should be zero okay and we know that at in a roller support the moment will be zero but there will be shear force because there will be a reaction okay there will be a reaction in the vertical direction like this okay so the other thing which is very important to understand here that we can use these conditions interchangeably okay like this okay we can use these conditions we can uh, provide uh, uh, if we have a pin support then we can provide a roller support in its conjugate beam and if we have a roller support in real beam then we can use pin support in the conjugate beam why so uh, the thing is that uh, uh, in case of beam okay in case of beam we assume uh, let me write it here uh, we assume that uh, the beam are axially rigid okay axially rigid or you can say that no axial deformation okay in case of beam we assume that the beam cannot elongate uh, elongate along its length okay there will be no axial deformation so if the axial deformation is zero which means that this roller support and this pin support are uh, are same or okay more or less same because there will be no no horizontal uh, sorry there will be no deformation in the horizontal direction at this roller okay there will be only vertical reaction and at pin there will also be only vertical reaction okay so we can use these interchangeably now let me write uh, let me discuss another type of support which is our free end okay so if we have a free end now how to convert this free end to its conjugate part so at free end there will be slope so slope will not be zero and there will be deflection so deflection will not be zero now if i want to convert this into its conjugate beam so what is the type of support condition which satisfy all these two requirements so we will convert this free end into a fixed support why because at fixed support there is a shear force okay and at fixed support there will also be a moment okay so that's how we can convert uh, this free end let me write it here free end to fixed support okay in conjugate beam it will be fixed okay so we have discussed different types of supports but the all these supports are at the end of the beam okay like this fixed support this pin support this roller support now if we have a supports in the middle of the beam like we have in continuous in continuous beams okay so let me number it here as five okay so let us discuss that uh, if we have a no uh, let us say if we have a pin support okay so if we see that in at pin support uh, if we draw the deflected shape of the beam so the deflected shape will be like this okay so this curve or you can say the deflected curve is continuous okay so this curve is sorry this curve is continuous okay and uh, one important thing uh, we can uh, uh, say that the slope is not equal to zero but the deflection will be zero now if i want to change this uh, support case in real beam to its conjugate part so how i am going to do okay so uh, we should have three requirement we have three requirement first the slope should not be zero uh, the deflection should be zero and the there should not be discontinuity in the slope or you can say uh, in the slope at this at the support so the only uh, the only condition which satisfy all these three requirements is a internal hinge okay so what we will do we will change this pin support by a by a let me write it here internal internal hinge why why because at internal hinge we know that shear force will not be zero okay the shear force will not be zero and we know that at internal hinge bending moment is zero the other thing uh, which is the requirement of continuity okay because the slope is continuous there is no discontinuity in the slope at this pin support so if we draw the shear force diagram 
for the uh, for the internal hinge okay or you can say for a beam having internal hinge then we will see that at the point of internal hinge at the point of internal hinge you can say that this is internal hinge so the shear, the shear force will be like this okay so there will be no discontinuity in the shear force diagram okay so that's why this internal hinge satisfy all these three requirements now let us move on to our next type of support so let us say if we have a uh, roller support okay so in roller support uh, we also have a continuous curve okay so this curve is continuous okay and the other thing is that theta is not equal to zero and y is zero so how we are going to convert this so we will just change this support condition like this okay so there is a roller in between these two beams okay so the slope uh, sorry in conjugate the shear force will not be zero but the moment will be zero and the continuity will be there in the sfd now let us discuss another type of support condition okay so let us say if we have a internal hinge okay in continuous beam so or you can say in any type of beam so how we are going to convert this beam so we know that at internal hinge there will be slope so slope will not be equal to zero and the deflection will also be will also be there okay so how we are going to convert this so we will just use a pin support okay at the place of this internal hinge so what is this this is ih internal hinge so we know that at pin support the shear force will not be zero and the bending one will also not be equal to zero okay now let us discuss another type of support condition so let us say if we have a beam like this if we have a beam like this and there is a roller okay so we will just convert this beam or uh, sorry you can uh, we will just convert this type of uh, support into a into a roller support okay so there will be theta will not be equal to zero and the deflection will also not be equal to zero so as in this case of conjugate beam their shear will not be zero and moment will not be zero okay so this is how we convert all these uh, type of real support into their conjugate support so this is how we do this now we will discuss our last thing which is our sign convention okay sign convention okay so um, let me write it here in real and in conjugate okay so uh, as i have uh, told you earlier that in real beam if we want to find out uh, shear force uh, sorry in real beam if you want to find out the slope then in conjugate beam we find out shear force and in real beam if we want to find out the slope then in conjugate beam we have to find out the bending moment at that point now what will be the sign convention because we will be uh, the workflow will be like this we will convert this real beam into conjugate beam then in conjugate beam we will find out the shear forces and we will find out the uh, bending moments okay where uh, we, we are we are asked to find out the slope and deflection in the real beam okay so we will get shear force we will get uh, bending moment in conjugate beam now how to understand what will be the direction of this uh, uh, slope and deflection in the real beam so uh, if uh, if in conjugate beam we got a positive shear force okay we got a positive shear force okay positive shear force so it means that the slope will be the slope will be counter clockwise okay the direction of slope will be like this or you can say uh, i uh, i should write uh, anti anti clockwise okay and uh, if i get a negative shear force it means that uh, let me raise these two okay if we get a negative shear force it means that the direction of slope is clockwise okay now uh, let us talk about the deflection okay so in real beam it is y deflection and in conjugate beam it is bending moment okay so if i get a positive bending moment in conjugate beam it means the deflection is upward 
okay in real beam the deflection is upward and if i get a negative bending moment in conjugate beam it means the deflection is downward in real beam okay so this is how this uh, sign convention works in conjugate beam method okay so these are the important things which i want to discuss in this video okay now and this is it for this video and we will meet in our next video thanks for watching